out this morning. My name is Mamie Locke and I'm the chair of the Virginia Legislative Black Caucus and I want to thank all of our caucus members for coming this morning and members of the Democratic Senate Caucus and members of the Democratic House Caucus uh, and all of our partners, uh, the AFL-CIO, Virginia New Majority and the NAACP. Thank all of you for coming out this morning. Last year we gathered here about this same time of the year no justice, no peace. to fight against Republican efforts to return Virginia to its inglorious past. There are those who wanted us to go back to days where many of us were disenfranchised. Voter suppression bills dominated the session along with efforts to deny women the right of choice. Well here we are in 2013 and they're back. Clearly Republicans are unhappy with the results of the November 2012 election where Virginians once again put the state in the blue column and returned President Barack Obama to the White House. They, they did not expect their voter suppression efforts to backfire. People turned out and stayed in line for hours. They expected women to forget. Women showed up in large numbers and let their voices be heard. In 2013, the sore losers have decided that if we can if if we can win an election through if we can't win an election through the established system, then we need to impose further restrictions. We will change the way the electoral votes are cast in Virginia. We will illegally create districts that ensure our longevity. They are doing so because the party of no, the party of the out of touch, the party that renders you to 47%, the party that instigated a war on women, the party of losers have decided to ignore the will of the people and undermine the political process. As one reporter put it, when the going gets scary, the scared change the rules. Their message is, when you can't win on your own, cheat. And we have a number of individuals here today who are going to talk on various issues that are of concern to us in this legislative session. And we're going to begin with Delegate Juwan Ward, who's going to talk about workers' rights to have a union because there are any number of efforts to undermine the rights of workers in this commonwealth, as well as to undermine small women and minority-owned businesses. So, Delegate Ward. Gracious God, Eternal Father, we invoke upon your presence on this day. We're grateful for this beautiful day and uh, the glorious presence of the sun and the sky and Father, all that this day grants us. A day that is full of great potentials and possibilities and opportunities to be about your business. Father, we seek your grace and mercy as we come together. People of diverse background, with hands joined and passionate hearts and minds seeking equality and justice and righteousness. It is in your words in Micah 6, 8 that raises the age old question and responds with the same answer. Mm -hmm. What does the Lord require of you? But to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly before our God. We ask for your wisdom and your guidance and your assistance, O oh God. There are those times or times when we know not how to slay Goliath, who comes but only to oppress, suppress, and depress, and just press against those who are the most vulnerable, the truly disadvantaged, and those who are disenfranchised. There are those who fought and suffered and bled and died for rights of all people in the United States of America. Father, grant us the fortitude, the perseverance, and the tenacity to take a stand and help us not to grow weary in well-doing. Yes. God, we come not seeking your hand and who's right, but what is right. There are times whereby we operate with a deficit in wisdom, insight, and the purpose by which we have been called. So, Father, we look to you when logic and reasoning has taken a backseat to partisan politics. It is your strength that we need when our voices are silent. It is your peace that we need when words of persuasion falls on deaf ear. You are the one who can change that in which you have created, and that is the hearts of men. Father, we pray for efforts that will produce results. We pray against the spirit of self-righteousness and those who parade around with a cross around their necks, yet rebellion and retaliation is in their hearts. You said in your word that every valley shall be exalted, every mountain made low, the crooked places made straight, and the rough places made plain. These 
are times we have no one to turn to but you. So we look to you upon your strength to move, upon your voice to speak, and upon your spirit to manifest itself on this day during these times. Father, we thank you for your glorious presence. We thank you for your dominion and power. And Father, we just pray that all things will be done in your precious and righteous name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And for those opening words at prayer, which is something that we truly, truly need. I am Delegate Juwan Ward. I represent the 92nd House District and the Virginia General Assembly. But even more important, I'm an Executive Council member of the Virginia AFL-CIO. Yeah! And so you could understand, oh, just one more thing. I'm also a Delta. Yeah! has upset me this entire year and this is my 10th session and never have I seen a session that is so anti-labor anti-working men and women and I truly cannot understand so yesterday on the floor we had legislation that was proposed to ensure that workers had a secret ballot now all I want to say is Workers can already have a secret ballot if that's what they want. So what's the purpose of this legislation? There was also legislation that would say that an employer cannot give out certain information on their workers to union organizers. That is already covered by federal legislation. National Labor Relations Board have already written legislation or rules governing those two issues. Number one, I don't know what information people are afraid of getting out. The information is already covered. We know what we can get and what we cannot. We do not want to know your shoe size. <laughs> so I don't know what the big issue is. This is just an attack on working men and women. It's an attack on teachers. It's an attack on firefighters. It's an attack on the men and women who build our ships for for defense. This is just a work, uh, an attack on all working people. I do not understand why we see this type of legislation over and over again. The only thing I can think of, and I what I want everybody to understand is business need workers. Unionized workers, I truly believe, are some of your best workers. They are proud of what they do. You ever see a union worker, they will quickly tell you in a heartbeat, I am a painter and I am from such and such local. I am UFCW, local 400. I am a steel worker, local 8888. The proudest people, they protect their own profession. They want nothing but the best. So you don't have to worry about union workers because we truly want what's best for the Commonwealth also. Businesses cannot exist without us. And so I want all of us to remember that someone in your background, if you got a little bit of money in your checking account, if you are paying your bills basically on time, it is because somebody in your family, in your background, was a union worker. And because they belong to a union, they were paid some fair wages. If they had fair wages, it trickled down to the next generation and the next generation to the point where somebody in your family went to college and now you're making a little bit of money and now perhaps some of them even have own their own businesses and they have forgotten. They have forgotten what it's like to be down there at the bottom trying to make it to the top. And so to all of these people and to all of us, we just say, don't forget where you come from. Don't forget where you come from. May God bless you all.